If you've ever used Arch Linux before, then you've probably used an AUR helper. So I'm talking about an AUR helper that helps you install packages from the Arch user repository. That's probably something like Yay or Paru. Those are the most popular that you may have used before. But you may be wondering which one is the best to use. As you can see here, I am on the Arch wiki. There are a whole bunch of different options. So you might be confused as to which one you should download. And hopefully in this video, I'm going to clear things up a little bit. I'm not going to go over all of these, but I'm going to go over three of the most popular. So it's going to be Paru, Yay, and Peak AUR. And I'm going to be going over the differences between all of these, some features that some might have that others don't have, and try to give you an informed decision as to which one you should pick for all of your AUR needs. And of course, before I start this video, I do have to put a disclaimer in here. Let's scroll up to the top of this page on the Arch Wiki and read this giant warning right here. AUR helpers are not supported by Arch Linux. You should become familiar with the manual build process in order to be prepared to troubleshoot problems. What this means is that AUR helpers are great, but they abstract a lot of the process. So some people come into Arch Linux and they have no idea how to manually install an AUR package. And that is something that you can do. You may not know about that. And sometimes these AUR helpers do break. And so you do need to get familiar with manually building these AUR packages. So you can fix things when they happen. This has happened to me before. And I'll probably be going over this in a future video, how to manually build packages from the AUR. It is actually very simple. So you should learn how to do it. But that disclaimer was just so you don't look like a noob when you post on the Arch Linux forums about how your AUR helper broke when all you needed to do was manually rebuild it. But anyway, let's get into all the different AUR helpers and the differences between them. So one of the most popular that you probably have heard of is Yay. And all of these AUR helpers in this video are actively maintained, despite what you may have heard. Yay is not really being maintained anymore. Yay is written in Go, if that matters to you. And it does basically everything that you would expect it to do. So you can run Yay and update all of your packages. And by default, all of these AUR helpers will also serve as a wrapper for Pac-Man as well. So as you can see, it is going to update all of my Pac-Man repository packages as well. So you can upgrade all of your packages with just Yay or Yay-SYU. That is the exact same thing. You can install packages with dash S. And of course, you can install them from Pac-Man repositories or the AUR. You can also search the AUR. Maybe you want to install DaVinci Resolve, but you can't remember what it's called. Well, here are all the different versions of it that you can install. You can remove packages, the same that you would with Pac-Man with the dash R command. And if you don't want it to wrap Pac-Man as well, you can just pass in this flag dash dash AUR so that it only will update your AUR packages or only install from the AUR. That's just if you want to keep Pac-Man and your AUR separate. So it's telling me that I don't have any AUR updates at the moment. And so all of these basic commands that you would expect from an AUR helper are there. And the only thing that I don't really like about Yay is that by default, it's not going to prompt you to read the package builds. So as you can see here, it has downloaded the package build. And what this is, is, is basically the build script for this package. And it's a shell script that's going to be run on your system that is written by users. So you should read over it just to make sure that everything looks good. I have a whole nother video on this if you don't know about this. And so you should be reading the package build. But if you get to this screen and you just hit enter, it will just skip past the package build. You don't have to read it, but you should be taking the time to read it. So this is what that looks like. And you should be reading this over. OK, there's no crazy commands in here. It's going to break my computer. So I think I can go ahead and install this. But by default, it's just very easy to skip over with just pushing enter. But now let's go over Paru, which is another very popular one. And Paru is very similar to Yay. And almost everything that you can do in Yay, you can also do in Paru. So everything that I just showed you is going to function the same as it would. You can run just Paru to update your system. And that's because Paru actually started as a rewrite of Yay. So one of the main developers from Yay that was working on Yay for a long time, he wanted to write his own version of it in Rust instead of Go. He preferred working in Rust. And so he just created his own new AUR helper called Paru that basically did the same thing as Yay, but it has a few extra features that makes it really nice to use. So let me go over some of the nice features that it has. 
So by default, it is going to force you to read the package builds. And so if I try to install this, then it's going to prompt me to proceed to review. And if I decline this, then it's just going to cancel out of the installation. So I'm basically forced to read this by default. And so it's popping up the package build and it's actually nicely syntax highlighted. So you can more easily understand what this is all doing. And that is because it has bat support. There's this tool called bat which reads files but can add syntax highlighting. And if you have that installed, then it will have support for that. So if you use Paru, I highly recommend installing bat from the AUR as well. But you can now look over the package build and it looks a lot nicer. And we can only then proceed with installation. You can also open these package builds in a custom file manager. So if I wanted to open the package build in Vim, I could pass in this dash dash FM and then specify where I want it to open in. Or actually, let me open this in NeoVim. It looks a little bit nicer. But once you proceed to review now, it's going to open it in NeoVim. And so we can look over everything. We can open up the package build and any other files that might be inside here. So maybe you prefer to open this up and edit it first, if there's anything that you would want to edit. And you can even open this up in, say, a terminal file manager like LF. And so if I open this up, I'm now inside my LF, which is pretty cool. And that is just another nice feature that Paru has over Yay. There's a few other really small things, like if you want to see the comments for something, you can run the option dash GC, and that will show you all of the recent comments on this package. This one doesn't have any, but we can look up some for some random utility. And maybe you're having problems installing this. And in that case, maybe you can follow the comments and see if they have any idea what's happening. So that's pretty useful. You don't have to open up a web browser and go all the way to the AUR and read the comments there. It is easier just to read it on your terminal. And so those features I just showed you, they're probably not a huge difference, but they are just a few nice quality of life features. And that's why I really recommend using Paru over Yay these days. Finally, let's talk about Peak AUR. And Peak AUR is different. It has a few additional features that you may find useful. So if we run Peak AUR-SYU, you can already see that the UI is going to be a little bit different. By default, it's going to look a little bit nicer than Paru or Ye by default. It gives you this nice, cool, colorful menu, which you may like. And it shows you what is changing in these versions. You can see which AUR packages are being updated. So I know just the UI alone, some people prefer over Ye or Paru. You can configure Ye or Paru to look something like this but this is just how it looks out of the box. And if you don't want to do any configuration, then you might like this. And it has a few more nice features. Let's say you want to install some package that takes a really long time to build. I don't know, maybe you're installing something like DaVinci Resolve or maybe a web browser that takes hours and hours to compile. What Peak AUR can do is it's going to ask you ahead of time if there are any questions that come up during the installation because Maybe if you're using Yay or Paru and you install a giant package like this, it'll take hours to compile. And then maybe halfway through the installation, it will pop up a question for you asking you if you want to do this or this. Or maybe it'll pop up an error or a conflict that you need to manually come in and resolve. And if you install one of these packages and then step away from your computer for an hour and then come back and find out that it's only half finished, that might be a little bit annoying for you. So Peak AUR will try to ask all of the questions beforehand. So you just need to install this, answer all the questions, and then you can step away from the computer and it should finish by the time you get back. So if that sounds interesting to you, you can give Peak AUR a chance. And it also has a few other nice defaults that I like. So when you update your system with SYU, by default, it will display the Arch Linux news for you, or at least any unread Arch Linux news because sometimes that can have something important in it. And you can configure this with Paru or Ye. At least in Ye, you can run something like this and it will give you all of the latest news as we can see up here. But Peak AUR just has that by default, which I think is a good default to have. And it does prompt you to edit the package build. So if we install something like this, and it's asking me if I want to edit the package build. And so you can open this in your editor and you can change anything if you'd like that can be useful and only then it will install. So I think that's pretty good. I do like the defaults for peak AUR and if you use it, you can't really go wrong with it. Maybe the only downside is that it's written by Python. And so some of you Python haters out there might not like it because of that. 
Definitely not written in a cool language like Go or Rust, but I think it's fine. And so finally, let's talk about manually building packages. And so these AOR helpers are just making things easier, but all that they're really doing behind the scenes is they're doing something like this. All they're doing is running git clone, and it's going to give you some folder like this with the package build inside it. And from there, you can run something like make package si in order to install it. And that's basically how you do it the manual way without the AUR helper. As you can see, it's now prompting me to install it with Pac-Man. But the manual way has some drawbacks, like it doesn't have an easy way to update it. If you do want to update this, then you would have to run something like git pull and pull it down from the remote and then update to the new version. And if you want kind of a middle ground between a fully featured AUR helper like Paru or Ye that does everything for you and just manually doing this by yourself, Again, I'll have another video on the full process of doing this. This is just a basic example, but there are some other utilities that you can use. We can even find them on this AUR helpers page. I know a lot of people recommend AUR utils. And what that is, is it's basically a bunch of helper scripts in order to make the process of manually doing this a little bit easier because you probably don't want to go to every single folder that you have and git pull every day just to check if there are new updates. But I might do another video on this in the future. I think it is a good tool. But for most people, I think that using an AUR helper is perfectly fine. I use it as well. And so maybe some elitists will tell you that it's not the right way to do it, but you can do whatever you want. Just make sure that you understand the manual build process as well. Finally, as for graphical package managers, I know that there is Pamac, at least for Manjaro. I know that Manjaro was using that for a while. I don't know if they're still using it, probably, but that is a graphical AUR helper. I don't really recommend using it because in my experience actually using Manjaro, it did break a lot and it's so far abstracted from what it's actually doing. I just don't recommend it. I think it's really bad for new users who have no understanding of anything and just use it and then complain whenever it breaks. On Arch Linux, I think you are expected to know what you're doing. So I don't like these graphical utilities that just makes it a little bit too easy and too convenient. And besides, you don't need a graphical program anyway. Running these from the command line is dead simple. So finally, my recommendation, I believe that Paru is the best AUR helper right now. But if you saw peak AUR and you think some of the features that I showed off sound cool to you, then definitely check that one out as well. But all of these AUR helpers are fine. You can't really go wrong with any of them. But hopefully that gave you an informed decision as to which one you should pick. And go out and enjoy your newfound AUR packages.